Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm sure Nico has explained everything about CERN, so I'll make this presentation for the non-Greek speaker then. Um, I'm Jérôme Pierlo. I'm uh, working at CERN, and I'm responsible for the procurement for accelerator and technology section. It's my pleasure to be here today and to walk you through this presentation about the procurement rules at CERN. I've tried to make this presentation as simple as possible, as synthetic as possible, but if you have any questions, feel free to come to me after the presentation and we can come back on uh, the points that appear to be unclear to you. Um, so the, the presentation is organized around six sections. Uh, introduction, brief introduction about CERN, what do we buy at CERN, the procurement and the industrial service group, our uh, principal procedure and rules. Then I'll explain you how to get in touch with CERN, where you can get the contact persons. Uh, I'll give a few figures about the Greek industrial return uh, for the year 2017. And then I'll give you a few hints on how to become successful supplier and uh, what are the results when you have a contract with CERN. Um, so for the legal framework, CERN is an intergovernmental organization established in 1953 and founded in 1954. It is governed by public international law. CERN is therefore entitled to establish its own uh, internal rules necessary for its proper functioning. This is the reason why we have our own procurement rules. So founded in 1954, uh, initially with uh, 12 member states, the idea is science for peace. You have to remember that this was right after the Second World War. Uh, today we are 22 member states, five associated member states and candidates for accessions. Uh, there are 2,500 staff, another 1,800 uh, paid personnel and 13 scientific users. The annual budget of CERN is uh, approximately 1.1 billion Swiss francs. Uh, the budget comes from the contribution of member states and associated member states. So you can see that here, for example, the main contributor is Germany, uh, and its contribution is 20.5% of the annual budget of CERN. This is the, co the overview for 2017. Uh, followed by United Kingdom, France, and Italy, and you see that the lowest contributor is Cyprus. Greece is here, and for the year 2017, uh, contributed um, with 13.5 million Swiss francs to the annual budget of CERN. Uh, the percentage of contribution is very important because it will play a role in the adjudication phase that I will detail further in the, in the slides. Uh, so what do we buy at CERN? Um, basically, we buy recurrent supplies and services, but we also buy accelerator technologies required for conciliation projects and new developments. Um, when we talk about recurrent supplies, it's everything that um, is needed on a daily basis to run the organization, like civil engineering, building, roadworks, roofing, cooling and ventilation, electricity, overhead cranes, gas, uh, furniture, tooling, mechanical engineering. We buy everything to run on daily basis the organization. We buy furniture, toilet papers, printer, racks, everything. In terms of accelerator technologies, we buy industrial control, field buses, high rod electronics, beam collimation, beam injectors, power converter, beam instrumentation, cryogenic equipment, vacuum equipment, vacuum vessels, laminations, magnets, uh, power transformer, everything that will be installed in the accelerator complex necessary to run the accelerators. So basically, we buy standard and non-standard equipment. When it is off the shelf for non-standard products, but which can be produced with existing manufacturing techniques or technologies, then CERN will draft what we call a functional specification. That means that we leave the freedom to the bidder to define the technical solution provided that every point of the technical specification is respected. Uh, when it's a non-standard product where the industry has neither the required know-how nor the immediate interest 
to develop this uh, and design the product for its existing market, in that case, CERN will draft what we call a build-to-print specification. That means that the design will be given by CERN and the contractor will have to code for every step of the manufacturing process and the procurement of the, of the, of the material and components. In both cases, when we talk about accelerator technology, we will ask for either prototypes or pre-series because we want to make sure, we want to be sure about the quality of the product we will install in the, in the accelerators. Um, this is the uh, procurement expenditure uh, over the year 2000-2017. So you can see here the green line represents the uh, expenditure for the service contract. So those are the contracts for which uh, we have personnel from the company on site performing, for example, electrical installation, maintenance of UPS system, maintenance of cooling and ventilation, uh, access control, uh, service contract. And then in blue, it is the line corresponding to the expenditure for the, um, for the supplies. The combination of both the green and the blue lines will give you the, the black line, as you have certainly understood. And uh, here, if you see between the year 2002 and 2007, we have a peak, and this corresponds to the construction of the LHC. You have another slight increase in 2012 and 2017, and this corresponds to what we call the long shutdown its turn. It's a period during which we stop the accelerator and we do all the uh, works concerning the upgrade or improvement of, of the accelerator. Um, the mean value, the average value is more or less 550 million spent on a yearly basis. Um, everything that we are going to buy, all our call for tenders are published on our web page, which we call the shopping list. So by clicking on this URL, you will have access to all our uh, call for tenders. I'll, after the presentation, I'll connect to the internet and I will show you in three clicks. It's very easy. You, you have access to uh, this web page. On this page, for every line, you will... Uh, find the reference number of the call for tender. You will have a cost range to tell you if it's below 750,000 Swiss francs, between 750 and 5 million, between 5 and 10 million, and above 10 million. This is our own estimation. You also have a brief summary, a brief description of the requirements, and then either the documents to download, fill in, and send back to CERN, or when the documents are not ready, you will have the, the, the reference of the contact person for the commission, commercial matters and technical matters. And if the names are there, it's because for any question, we encourage you very much to contact us, and this is our job to answer to your questions. Um, now about the procurement and industrial service group. The mission of the group is to procure all supplies and services meeting all requirements at the lowest overall possible cost while achieving balanced industrial returns um, for the member states and respecting the procurement rules. The procurement rules are based on six main principles, transparency and impartiality. So CERN purchase supplies and services and awards contract on the basis of transparency and impartiality. Anytime you can ask question why you were not qualified to a market survey, where was your ranking, what is the percentage, what is the difference in percentage between your bid and the winning bid, and even in an extreme case, if you feel that you have been spoiled uh, during the adjudication, you can call, get in contact with your ILO, and then we will provide you with all the information that you require. This uh, process is a very transparent process. Then the second principle is the limited tendering. Certain invitation to tender um, are limited to the firm established in the member states and associated member states. The reason is that we are funded by those member states and associate me member states, so we want the money to go back in those uh, member states. Then the third principle is objectivity and fair competition. All documents are drafted in an objective way, so as to assure uh, fair competition between the bidders. 
to that extent, we even have what we call a specification committee. And one of the role of the specification committee is to make sure that one company would not be favorized by adding this or this uh, particular feature in the technical specification. Then we have selective and tendering procedures. Uh, as a rule, sir, certain tendering procedure is selective and does not take the form of an open invitation to tender. That means that you have to be selected and contacted by CERN uh, to participate to the call for tender. You will not have access to the document of the call for tenders. By visiting the shopping list, you can have access to the market survey. Through this market survey, you can be either qualified or not but the document for the call for tender will not be published. We will send them, we will send you a link, and from this link you will be able to download documents for the call for tender. Then the fifth principle is confidentiality. The opening, evaluation, and negotiation process are strictly confidential. That means that we don't provide information to the bidder during that period. And finally, the adjudication basis, it's either the lowest compliance based on the FCA or the best value for money. I will come to that a little bit later. Uh, okay, so this is the procedure for obtaining offers at CERN. As you can see, it's, it's very easy, but sometimes it's not clear, so in the next slide it has been summarized. Basically, there are three types of uh, requirements. The requirements below 10,000 Swiss francs. The requirements between 10,000 Swiss francs and 200,000 Swiss francs and all the requirements above 200,000 Swiss francs. So basically there are three different procedures. For all the requirements below 10,000 Swiss francs, uh, the price inquiry can be uh, directly issued by the uh, technical officer himself, provided that the procurement rules are respected. We need minimum three bids, and of course the purchase order is sent to the lowest compliant. For requirements between 10,000 and 200,000 Swiss francs, the ILO, ILO stands for Industrial Liaison Officer, this is Nico, but I will come back to that in, in another slide will receive a copy of all the price inquiry above 50,000 Swiss francs. So for those requirements, the technical officer will prepare the technical specification and the procurement officer will prepare the commercial documentation and will issue the price inquiry. We need minimum three to five bids, response time is four weeks, and then the purchase order will go to the lowest compliant. Now for um, requirements above 200,000 Swiss francs. This procedure is a bit more complicated and is longer. So everything starts internally with a document which is called a departmental request. It is a document that is signed by all the stakeholders. And when the document is signed, it comes to the procurement service. When we receive this document, we know that there is a project behind and the project is funded in terms of procurement. Then we will organize what we call the startup meeting. The startup meeting is a meeting which is organized between the procurement and the technical officer. And during the meeting, we will define the strategy of the call for tender. For example, we will decide if uh, we will allow for uh, subcontracting, if we will allow for a group of firms, or if the bidder shall be a single firm. We will discuss if, for example, we will provide the bidder with the, the, the contractor with the raw material, or if uh, he will have to procure the raw material. We will, for example, decide, uh, discuss about the planning, if we want to split the contract between two uh, contractors or not. All those kind of details will be discussed during the startup meeting. When the startup meeting is over, then we will make the announcement on the shopping list. So this sends us back again on the shopping list. And this is only when you will see the line, a new line con concerning this new uh, call for tender. Then the technical officer will prepare a market survey. The procurement officer will prepare the commercial documentation. All those documentation will go through a specification committee that will make sure that the quality of document is correct, that there is no features that could favorize or defavorize any, any companies. And together with the technical officer, we will, the procurement will prepare a list of firm to be contacted for this market survey. Uh, the list of, of firm is, um, 
based on A, our database, and B, on the uh, contact that the technical officer have. At that stage, the ILO can intervene and ask us to add any companies that he knows of and is when he's sure that the company can could do the job. But also at that stage, since you have seen the new line on the shopping list, you can trigger your interest by sending us an email and asking us to be part of this uh, market survey. Then the document will be sent to all the firms listed and uh, we will ask you to send us your answer normally within four weeks period of time. When we receive all the answer to the market survey, we will make an analysis and based on this analy analysis, we will qualify you for the next step, which is the proper call for tender, or we will not qualify you. In any case, you will receive an answer. And if you want to know why you were not qualified, in the case you are not qualified, then you send us an email, we will give you the reasons, or you contact your ILO and he can give you the reasons why you were not qualified. So a market survey consists of two documents. The first one is a technical description. It's a brief description on our requirements, the planning and the constraints. And the second document is a qualification questionnaire. In that document, we will ask questions about your company. And depending on the answer, we will say that well, we will qualify you or not. A very important thing as well is that never indicate uh, wrong information in your market survey because we sometimes go and visit companies and we would not be very happy if we discover information that are not correct. So when the list of qualified firm is ready, then we go for the second phase, which is the call for tenders. So we prepare all the documents, technical officer prepare the technical description, all the annex, all the drawings, all whatever documents would be necessary. Procurement officer will prepare the tender form. We will uh, go through the technical to the, the specification committee once again. The idea is that we want the quality of the document to be good and we also want to avoid any problem in the, in the technical specification. And then we will send you all the documents to all the companies. And the companies will have four to six weeks this will be defined at the time of the issuance of the document to uh, send us back your, the, the answer. So you will have to log in on an URL, download the document, and then when, when you are ready with your offer, upload the document again. Um, between the time the documents are sent and uh, you have to upload your, uh, your offer, there is what we call the um, clarification process. Up to one week before the submission deadline, you can ask all the questions that you want about the technical specification, about the, the, the future contract. And then what we will do, we will neutralize the question and answer to all the bidders because we want all the bidders to have the same level of information. Sometimes we will even organize on-site at CERN a bidder conference. It's a conference, you will be invited to come, and then we will go through all the specificities of the technical specification and the future contract. We do this when there are difficulties and when we want to make sure that you understand all the subtleties of the documentation and the contracts. So at the submission deadline, you will submit, you will upload all your bids, and then we will uh, start the opening. Um, analysis of the bid, we will check the price calculation, we will check the technical compliance of your offer, we will make sure that all the requested documents have been submitted, we will uh, verify the country of origin and the alignment rules. I uh, will come back to those last two points in the next slides. Then we will start contractual negotiation with the lowest bidder, the lowest compliant bidder, and then eventually we will uh, issue the contract. Um, so the country of origin, this is a very important definition for us. For supply contract, it's the country in which goods are manufactured or will last, or where the last major modification will take place. If 60% of the, of the bid originates from a poorly balanced member state, then the entire bid is considered as originating for a poorly, from a poorly balanced member state. So this is a new definition, the poorly balanced member states. 
um, to understand what is a poorly balanced member state, we have to go through this uh, definition of industrial return coefficient. So basically, this is the ratio between the um, percentage share of the procurement volume with the contribution of the country over the same period. I'll come, back, uh, I'll come with an example. But there are three classifications. Either the country is well balanced, that means that the industrial return coefficient is above 0 0.9, or the country is poorly balanced, that means that its industrial return coefficient is compressed between 0 0.3 and 0 0.9, or it is below 0 0.3, and then in that case it's very poorly balanced member states. So if we take this example for the year 2000, this is Greece, by the way. So 2017, the annual budget of CERN is 1.1. Contribution of CERN is 13.5 million. So the ratio gives you a percentage of 1.18. Then if you see that for supply, for the supply, left hand side it's the supply, right hand side it's the industrial services. For the supply, we spent 232 million last year and only 1.8 million in Greece. So if you make this ratio and you divide it by this 1.18%, this will give you this IRC of 0 0.6. In that case, that means that Greece is considered as CERN, at CERN as a poorly balanced member state. And in that case, you are entitled to uh, have the alignment rule. That means that um, if you make an offer and under certain conditions you will be in competition with, for example, a French company, we will call you and you will, we will tell you, okay, this is the adjudication price. If you can reduce your offer by thought to reach this price, you will have the contract. The, the, then the winning bid, the French one, will be declared as second because you can benefit from this alignment rule. So this is very, very important, especially in the case, in that case, because Greece is considered as a poorly member state. Uh, so the basis of the award for the supply contract is the lowest compliant based on the FCA because we don't want to um, defavorize countries that are further away from CERN. Lowest compliant doesn't mean lowest cost because we do take into consideration the initial investment, the energy consumption, the spare parts, the maintenance, the training of personnel, and also the disposal cost. For the service contract, the adjudication basis is uh, the best value for money. So this is the most economically advantageous bid. <coughs> Okay, so this is the link for our webpage. All the information I've tried to uh, summarize and give you now are public and they are on our webpage. I'll make you the demonstration after. So you have access to all the rules, who to contact at CERN. Anyway, there is this generic email address, procurement.services at CERN.ch, where you can ask all the questions, but you also have access to all the procurement officer by clicking on this other link. And in the last link, you have access to uh, all the technical responsible for the different equipment. So CERN has nominated uh, equipment responsible, for example, if you need information on a contract about transformer or mechanical engineering, you will have access to uh, the, the technical engineering charge. But there is also a very important person uh, for you, it's the ILO. ILO stands for Industrial Liaison Officer. So uh, Nico, for example, his role is to liaise CERN with the uh, industrial network of Greece. And uh, it is good for any question that you uh, also put him in the loop. He has our contact, he comes and visits us. He can ask us to add this or this company in, in a list of firm for a market survey, for example. He will help you uh, preparing your bid if you have any questions. If you have any difficulties with CERN, he will intervene. But on the other hand, if we have difficulties with a company from Greece, then we will call him and ask him if he can help us. So it's, very, it's, a, it's a key person for either the company or for CERN. And also ILO have uh, two forum per year where they meet all together from, uh, with all the ILO from the different countries, and then they come and make some uh, proposal to uh, the procurement service to improve the, the procedures or the uh, industrial return. 
So there are two ILO for Greece. It's uh, Nico, but also Professor Funtas. You can find their contact on, on the web page. Now this is uh, the, uh, the figure about the Greek industrial returns. Uh, what you can see if you go at the last table for the, the supplies, you can see that uh, since the year 2012, the industrial return has been decreasing and is, remains poor. Last year, we managed to increase it a little bit, but it's not the, at the level it should be. Um, so we really have to find a way to work with you. We know that every time we work with companies from Greece, we are very happy with the quality. They have a, a good know-how, and I'll give you a list of, uh, for example, companies with whom we had great contract. We have Dromea, Electromec, Campacas. It's a foundry that we recently found and uh, we were really happy with their work. We have Prisma, Rentron, many good companies. I would say that all the contracts we have are good. There is a good know-how, good quality of the work, but we do not manage to trigger interest from Greek companies to CERN. Um, I added this slide because I wanted to show you that um, the year 2017 here for the market survey, 75 market survey issued by CERN, only six companies in Greece. 89 invitation to tender sent, only four companies in Greece. That's not enough. So we have to find together a way to, to improve this. Um, a couple of advice. We try to do some kind of sourcing, uh, but the best way for you to receive call for tenders is make yourself known and register your company in our database because this is the first step when we prepare the list of firms to be contacted. Then contact your ILO if you have any question or contact the uh, procurement officer or the technical officer. Do not hesitate to contact us. This is our job to answer your question. And then a few information. 100% of the company that have one contract with CERN have tried. It's like the lottery. If you don't try, you will never win. There is this misbelief that uh, to win a contract at CERN, you have to be a big company, thousands of employees. This is a misbelief. Very often, the companies are small or medium-sized because they are very flexible. So this is very important to know. Then ensure full understanding of the specification. Don't make uh, some impasse on the price of the documentation or the training or the spare parts that we might specify in the technical specification. Because as soon as you have the contract, we will ask the services that are in the contract to be provided. You cannot come back to us and say, oh yeah, but I forgot to uh, count this in my uh, offer because then you would not have had the contract maybe. So if we sign the contract, we will force you to respect the every point of the contract and then make your best offer directly. We don't do a second round of table. We open the bid, we go to the first bid. If it is compliant, we don't even go to the second one unless there is this alignment rules. Then result of contract with CERN, 38% of the company had developed new products, 42% have increased their international exposure, 44% have improved their technological learning, 52% would have had poorer sales, 17 open new markets and 60% acquire new customer. All firms has, uh, had derived a great value from CERN as a marketing reference. You have to know that as soon as you are a supplier of CERN, you can use this logo on your brochure or on your web page or uh, you can make a publicity about it. This is it if you have any question. Participate to some tenders on uh, overseas building operations 
organization in the United States, where actually from the United States they say that it is one contract with one company. This is their rule. Hmm. Okay. This is valid when you supply something that you install it also. So it depends because you can uh, either uh, make your offer as a single firm, and that means that you decide to subcontract the installation to a company of your choice. We can also help you during the tendering procedure and put, uh, give you contacts of local company that would be happy to work for you. But in that case, you are the, the company who signed the contract and this is called subcontracting. But you can also create a group of firm and in that case, your company plus the installer will uh, make a joint venture and will sign the contract. So you have both choice. Okay, in the, case, in the first case, I can understand. We go up front, so I understand this. In the second uh, case that you mentioned, that's the joint venture. Also, the installer needs to register with his company to make the process in order to become like a supplier or seller. Yeah, but this will be declared in the offer, and if they have an office in France or in Switzerland, it can be done easily. That's no problem. But if, if you happen to have that case, just contact the procurement service, and we can also give you some contacts of local companies uh, that would be happy to work with you, I mean, that would be happy to discuss with you about that. Do not hesitate to, to, to ask us some kind of help.